neonatal jaundice. And this is a very common occurrence and is defined as yellow discoloration of the skin and eyes due to increased bilirubin in the blood. It's very common. It can occur in greater than 50% of neonates. They can have jaundice in the first week of life. I wanted to talk very briefly about another condition that's related called kernicterus. Kernicterus is the most severe consequence of having neonatal jaundice. Essentially, it is brain damage that occurs, and it is caused by this bilirubin, in particular unconjugated bilirubin, reaching the brain. Now I wanted to briefly uh, illustrate a little bit about the mechanism of bilirubin. Bilirubin essentially comes from the breakdown of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin are these small molecules that sit inside the red blood cell. And when they break down, they break down into unconjugated bilirubin. Now later, this unconjugated bilirubin travels to the liver and inside the liver, with the help of an enzyme known as UGT, it is converted to conjugated bilirubin. Now I want to talk about the three main types of jaundice that can happen in a neonate. You've got physiological jaundice, and you have pathological jaundice, and in the middle you have jaundice associated with breastfeeding or breast milk. Now physiological jaundice, as the name implies, is jaundice that isn't really of concern, but it can happen when bilirubin levels are less than 18 milligrams per deciliter. The reason this happens is because in neonates there's a shorter uh, red blood cell lifespan and that leads to increased bilirubin production. In addition, the enzyme UGT is also sometimes deficient. Now pathological jaundice, that's the one that you really need to be concerned about. Now the scenarios of pathological jaundice are very important to remember. Anytime you have jaundice in the first day of life, that's pathological. Or if jaundice continues beyond two weeks of life, that's also considered pathological. And the bilirubin levels here are going to be greater than 18. And these uh, cases are often related to some underlying medical condition, such as hemolytic anemia. And there's another one that sometimes happens and shows up in clinical vignettes. It's known as G6PD deficiency. So I'll just remember that. In terms of symptomatology, the obvious, which is the skin will appear jaundiced, the sclera of the eyes will also appear yellow, the baby will be lethargic, and may also uh, have poor feeding. In terms of diagnosis, the diagnosis, of course, before you run any labs, get a good past medical history. You know, talk uh, about uh, what medical conditions the baby has uh, or what medical conditions are in the family because that can help. In terms of labs of course the bilirubin levels and some other lab tests that are done that help are CBC to check for anemia and then the peripheral blood smear and also a reticulocyte count. In terms of treatment, physiological jaundice um, doesn't really need any treatment. It usually resolves uh, within about one week of life. And breast uh, milk jaundice or breastfeeding jaundice usually also doesn't require treatment. But if the bilirubin level is become very high, like greater than 18, what you can do is recommend the mother to change 
from breastfeeding to formula and that will help bring down the bilirubin. Now we get into the cases where you actually do need to treat and there's two types of treatments for pathological jaundice. There's phototherapy and there's exchange transfusion. What exactly is phototherapy? Essentially all that term means is you're putting the baby under a light. In particular it's a fluorescent light. And this fluorescent light which can be white or other colors, what it does is it changes unconjugated bilirubin to a water-soluble form. And that water-soluble form can then be excreted by the body. What is exchange transfusion? Exchange transfusion is the more serious treatment. So first you start with phototherapy and then later, if necessary, you do exchange transfusion. What exchange transfusion is, is that you actually have to remove from the baby the blood that contains all that excess bilirubin and then replace with donor red blood cells. This helps remove all that excess bilirubin from the neonate circulation. Now what I wanted to do is give you a indication of when phototherapy is used and when exchange transfusion is used in terms of bilirubin values. So here are the cutoffs. Phototherapy is used if the bilirubin levels are greater than 15 milligrams per deciliter between 24 and 48 hours of life. If they are greater than 18 milligrams per deciliter between 49 and 72 hours of life, you use exchange transfusion. And if the bilirubin level is greater than 20 after 72 hours of life. Exchange transfusion, because it's a more serious procedure, has higher cutoff values. And the cutoff values for that are greater than 20 for bilirubin at 24 to 48 hours of life and greater than 25 milligrams per deciliter of bilirubin after 48 hours. Now let's take a look at a couple of vignettes. A neonate of approximately 38 weeks gestation is born to a primigravid mother. Pregnancy and delivery are uncomplicated with APGAR scores of 9 at 1 minute and 5 minutes. Mother's and baby's blood groups are both O positive. Mother chooses to exclusively breastfeed the neonate. At 24 hours of life, the neonate is noticed to be jaundiced, and total serum bilirubin is noted to be at 7. He is discharged home later the same day with an appointment to follow up within one week with the pediatrician. However, 48 hours later, the neonate is brought to the emergency room. History from the mother reveals that the neonate has progressively become more jaundiced and not breastfeeding well and is lethargic. Exam also reveals evidence of moderate volume depletion and significant jaundice, including the soles. Neurologic exam is normal. Total serum bilirubin is 20, most likely diagnosis is. Well, this neonate is at three days gestation now with a bilirubin of 20, so that's definitely uh, outside the range of normal. So it's a, just a typical scenario of neonatal jaundice. Breast milk jaundice may be a tempting choice, but this usually occurs about five to seven days after the neonate is born. A full-term newborn boy was born to a gravita 3 para 3 woman who had not committed to regular prenatal care. There is a history of neonatal jaundice in her second baby caused by a minor blood group incompatibility. Assuming this baby exhibits jaundice in the first few days of life, which of the following cutoff points is satisfactory for alerting the primary care physician to the likely need for phototherapy? Well, if you remember, the cutoffs were 15 for the bilirubin at 24 to 48 hours of life, greater than 18 at 49 to 72 hours of life, and greater than 20 after 72. 
So let's see which one of these match. It looks like choice B is the best one. And finally, you are the doctor on call in the Well Baby Nursery at the community hospital. One of the nurses calls you to ask about one of your patients. The baby is now 30 hours old and was full term via vaginal delivery to a healthy 28 year old mother. There's no complications at delivery and the baby has been feeding well. The nurse is concerned that the baby looks yellow. You ask her to send for a bilirubin level. A few hours later, she calls you to tell you that the total bilirubin level has come back at 18 and the direct bili is 0 0.6. Parents are not concerned about the baby's discoloration. The most appropriate next step is, well, you can kind of just look at the previous question's correct answer to see what you should do. It fits perfectly. 30 hours, which is this range, and bilirubin is greater than 15. So you definitely need to do phototherapy, and that would be choice C.